right, guys and gals, um, we are on exam three. We have uh, made it to the really intense exams, and uh, I'm going to walk you guys through some of these instructions here, just so you have a full understanding of what is expected of you. If you guys are in Kinesiology 456A, this is wonderful because you're doing these simultaneously and you're getting two uh, unique clients with similar abnormalities that will overlap, but uh, you're going to be looking at some very different uh, components on this exam. So um, let's talk a little bit about what this exam is. Essentially, I am going to throw a bunch of different pieces at you, and uh, I am going to see how well you and your teammates can tell me a story with these pieces. Now, you guys have full uh, creative freedom on this exam. You, have, uh, you can fill out uh, the information that I'm asking of you any way that you want. Uh, just as long as it coincides with this character that we will be talking about uh, throughout the duration of this presentation. So again, you guys, we're, we're not in a lab. We don't have the equipment to uh, work um, and conduct these assessments, but I'm going to let you guys have some freedom here and a little bit of fun with this project. Uh, and we are focusing on prescription now. Okay, we spent a lot of time talking about the diseases. We've talked a little bit of time talking about assessment. Um, we are doing assessments in 456A, and we know that we can modify assessments for submax in 456B with this particular population. Um, so we're just going to look at this person and figure out how we would program based upon the information that's in your textbook. And you guys are going to have to do a little bit of digging here. So let's get into it. It's uh, exam three. It's time to go big or go home. Remember, I'm going to be annotating this as we talk. This bad boy is worth 100 points, um, po points um, which is double uh, what your previous exams were. So if you guys decide you want to uh, sleep on this assignment, uh, it could literally wipe out the performances that you have done before. So here is the task for you and your team. I'm going to provide you with an at-risk client that is living with a pathology with very particular features, okay? And I'm just telling you here that uh, as an expert in the field of exercise physiology and prescription, it will be your job to... Let me get this out of here and make that look a little prettier. There you go. Present me with the details surrounding a particular disease. Help design goals, health goals for this client. Uh, let's just get rid of that. There's. I'm going to find all my nice little typos here. I typed this on the plane. Uh, I am six foot four, 230 pounds. And when you uh, ride in coach on the plane, there is not much room. So I will be fixing this as we go along. Help design health goals for this client. Um, assess this client's health status, prescribe exercise that may arrest, reverse, or completely remove a pathogenic condition. All right, so um, here we go. On the first section here, you are going to have one of your team members present this information to me for about five minutes in duration uh, via video. Uh, you're going to present this information to me like I am your boss and I want to know who your client is, who you're working with, and what the particulars of this client are. So consider the following information regarding your new client. Ask every question uh, proposed below. So you are going to be working with a 57-year-old female. She is 4'7". Her body weight is 195 pounds. I'm going to ask you to convert that to kilograms. How many kilograms is she? Uh, her chest circumference is 36. Her waist circumference is 32. Her resting blood pressure and heart rate are as follows. Systolic 148 over 99. Resting heart rate 135 beats per minute. This should jump out right away and you should be like, oh, wow, that's pretty high. Yes, you're right. It's pretty high. What is her age predicted maximum heart rate? Please do that for me. You should know what that is. Um, are there any 
primary cardio uh, cardiac risk factors. I said, use your textbook, use ACSM, use any other outside resources. I said, I will also provide you with some materials. So let me just take this moment to show you what I have for you. So one of the documents I am uploading for you guys is going to have this uh, appendix a three risk factors, signs and symptoms of disease. So you fill this out however you see fit. There's two um, pieces here. Now, this is going to work with this. Okay. Uh, let's read this. Susan is a 65 year old female non-smoker who recently decided to attempt a cancer 5k benefit walk to raise money for breast cancer. She hadn't ex exercised in years, but used to participate in road races when she, see, this is why we are going through this, was younger. Her father died of heart attack at age 67 and her mother died of breast cancer at age 79. Both parents also suffer from AFib. You guys should know what AFib is. Last year, she was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Let's capitalize that as it should be and currently takes metformin. This is a medication talked about in detail in the diabetes chapter. Don't worry, I have some metformin stuff for you. She also reports taking statins to lower her cholesterol. Um, so let me get rid of this. Um, statins are also mentioned in your metabolic disorder, kidney and liver failure section. Okay. In chapter 20. So, uh, you need to be aware of statins and metformin. Just be aware of them. Okay. Her total serum cholesterol is this. Her HDL is this. Her LDL is this. Are these problems you need to address? Um, well, one of the ways you can do so is by just answering these questions. Okay. Um, and yeah, let's make it, let's just make it, um, let's add one more here for you guys, just to make it a bit more interesting. Triacylglycerols are, and you should know what a triglyceride is or a triacylglycerol. Uh, let's add this is, let's say 275. That sounds like a good number. Boop, boop. Okay. Now what you need to do is if you are doing this section, if you're the team member one, you need to present this person to me. You are saying, I am working with Susan. She's a 65 year old non-smoker and you are presenting to me the problem areas. Okay. And that should be abundantly clear that those are the problem areas. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to fill this out and you're going to tell me if she is at risk. Um, and you can, you have, you have liberty to fill this out. Uh, the best way you see fit because you're telling me this story, right? Susan's not a real person, but I would advise you to pay particular attention to this. Okay. And particular attention to this here, right? So you are, um, you are essentially documenting, uh, the risk that might be associated with Susan. So, uh, you can also put in, you, if there's, uh, any hypertension, I, yeah, I would imagine that she's going to have hypertension, right? Uh, with, uh, this information here, you can kind of tell that she's going to be hypertensive. Um, so the other thing you're going to do is when I'm talking about this risk factor stuff here, I have another thing that you can fill out. And that is here and you can fill this in as however you wish. She is your character. You do with her, uh, whatever you think is best. If you think Susan, based upon what you see here and her current health, uh, if you think that she is having, uh, way too much breakfast and way too much dinner, um, portion size are, uh, extra large, you fill this out just as long as the story you're telling me makes sense. So, uh, whoever's taking section one, you can, uh, use this, fill it out. However you want, be creative. You can use this 
And then you should remember, uh, uh, before I give you the last one, you can also use this. This is a medical history questionnaire. Remember I told you her parents had some issues, so you might want to use this as well. Um, and again, f fill it out freely. If you, if Susan has been in the hospital, pick a reason why, but don't tell me that she has uh, gout. Well, gout would make sense because she's diabetic. Um, but just make sure the story makes sense. Fill this information out. And then lastly, you should all know what this is because you guys have all taken uh, uh, Kinesiology 456A. If not, uh, if you're taking it now, you should still know what this is. Uh, please fill out the PAR-Q. And remember, I told you she's taking certain medications. So person one in your team, you are going to present this information to me. Um, you are going to answer these questions in your video. Let me clean this up for one second here because I don't want to give you guys a copy that has um, highlights on it. Let's clean all that up. Okay. Um, here's the questions you're going to answer. And you have five minutes to do this. So you do what you think is best. Based on the following information, please tell me if this subject is at risk and requires medical clearance before she begins to exercise. I will provide you with supplemental material like I just did, but 456A should have shown you this already. Please conduct a PAR-Q and tell me what the PAR-Q indicates. I've, I've given you that PAR-Q, right? If you don't remember, there it is. Fill it out. Um, present these results to me like I am your senior clinical exercise physiologist and I have no idea who this woman is. What are the primary risk factors you must be aware of? Tell me about them. Tell me why you, why you, that should be you, uh, identify them as risk. Does Susan have any glucose concerns? Does she have any insulin deficiencies that we should be aware of? Is she hypoglycemic? Is she hyperglycemic? Um, is there any circulating lipid concerns we should have? Is she hyperlipidemia? We talked about this in our last uh, lecture. So um, this is your chance for you to start combining all of this stuff together. Now, this is a good place for me to also show you that I have taken out of my textbook, uh, chapter 21, talking about diabetes. And this I'm going to upload as well. This is going to be a great guide for you. It's very, very short. Now, look at, we're not even talking about oh, that didn't work. Let's see if I can, uh, can I draw? I cannot draw. Wait, maybe, maybe here we go. We're not even talking about type one diabetes, right? So you don't even have to worry about that. Here's an overview of the pathology here. Talks a little bit about what diabetes is. And look at this. If you read this, this correlates with these, uh, I'm sorry, these questions right here, right? Cause this tells us that there's insulin sensitivity issues, right? Oh, wow. That's interesting. In insulin deficiencies. Yeah. That's, that's one of the deficiencies, uh, blood glucose concentrations. Didn't I just say glucose, right? So I'm giving you the resources to tell me this story. Um, so your entire team should be reading this as well. And look at, this is going to come in handy when you get to exercise testing and exercise programming, right? And this more on this in a minute. Okay. So person one, whoever this is, you have about five minutes to tell me if she's at risk, your par cue should tell you that, uh, your medical history questionnaire, let me bring it back in should tell you that your lifestyle evaluation should tell you that and your risk factors and signs should tell you that all of these should be indicators that uh, will tell you that uh, she is at risk and i'm going to get one more thing here for you guys um acsm let me get this one more thing up here for you um I'm also going to provide you with this. If you're in 456, you already know what this is. Um, I'm sorry, if you're in 456A, you've already know what this is. But if you're uncertain if she is at risk, answer these questions. Okay. Does the individual currently exercise? Yes or no? Well, based upon what I told you here, she's really not exercising much, right? So I'm going to follow this no thing. Okay. And then I'm going to read this. Does he or she have cardiovascular metabolic or renal disease 
or signs or symptoms that suggest she does? Well, you look at all of this here and you tell me, right? And if you think it's yes, she needs medical clearance before she comes and exercises with you. If you think no, she doesn't need it, then move to the next section. So I'm asking you when you are evaluating this person to use this, use this, use this, use this, use this, and figure out if she needs medical clearance before you start providing exercise services for her. Okay. And I'm giving you a bunch of information here to help you answer that question. Okay, so be professional and indicate what the next steps are. So all in all, you have to make a five minute video. I need to see your face. I do not want to see you looking at a piece of paper. I want to see you confidently talking to me and you can present this information in any way you want. You can draw it on a whiteboard. You can make a PowerPoint presentation where you toggle back and forth between your face and the, um, the uh, PowerPoint presentation. You can do what I do with an iPad and draw these things while you talk, just as long as you are not speaking mechanically, then that indicates to me that you are reading off of a sheet of paper. And this particular exam is meant to challenge you in a way where you are being a professional and not reading off of a document. Okay. So that's person one, person two, team member two, this section should last about five to eight minutes in duration. This is where you and your team are going to present me with a presentation that's five to eight minutes. Please keep it within that range. I'm going to have about 60 of these to watch. Um, so it's going to be incredibly time consuming um, where you're going to present the pathology. Now, again, you can use any medium that you want to present it. If you want to draw on a whiteboard, if you want to draw on construction paper and video it, if you want to make a PowerPoint presentation, uh, if whatever you want to do, be as creative as possible because the creativity is going to be part of the grade. So I'll read this to you just in case I have any typos in here. Next, I want you and your team members to conduct a mini lesson on the details and mechanisms associated with Susan's pathology. Well, we know this is diabetes. So what are some details and mechanisms? Well, I'm glad you asked because here are just a couple that you can choose from. You can pick all of them. You can choose one of them. And you're going to tell me about these things in detail, like you are a scientist and an exercise physiologist. So, uh, this is where you're going to have to dig deep. Okay. Uh, you have the freedom to use this time, uh, uh, and whatever resources you see fit to depict best the pathological events occurring within Susan's body. Okay. Uh, so you have all the creative freedom here to, to depict this. So if you want to focus particularly on, uh, dyslipidemia or hyperlipidemia, have at it, look up, uh, how this particular mechanism is changed in diabetes. Um, let me continue to read. You do not need to write me and get my permission about what to present. Uh, instead, you need to speak with your team members and figure out the significant mechanisms involved with students, Susan's risk. This portion is entirely your design. Um, it must have details, pictures, or animations. I just kind of said that have visuals or drawings, whichever you and your team members feel is best. It must be worthy of a 400 level course at this university. Okay. Here's my public service announcement. Let me just highlight it. So I, I know that, uh, I presented this to you guys in a way that was fair. I cannot emphasize how important this section is. Please combine forces on this section. And once you think you have a good story, revise it, revise it, revise it. Okay. So what do I mean by a good story? Well, when you present this to me in section one, and you present these things to me in section one, and I'm not telling you how to present it. I'm just telling you that you can use these things. Just make sure the mechanisms that you're focusing on make sense with what you're presenting here. So for example, if you talk to me about cirrhosis and Susan has cirrhosis, and then you get into the pathology section and you talk to me about obesity, you better connect the dots on that. Okay. So, um, you have some freedom here to decide what is interesting to you when you present the pathology, just make sure one more time, make sure that section one, okay. Demographics and pre-assessment aligns with the story you're telling me, uh, oops, let me go back up, uh, lines with the story you're telling me on the pathology. They have to align. 
Um, and then, um, yeah, I, I, I take this section very seriously and there's no way to shortcut this because I will know immediately. Listen, I've spent 10 years at a hospital in a medical school studying diabetes. So, uh, I am going to be very, very, very uh, on top of it when you present this. So please know that. Um, every issue that she is dealing with is indicated in the demographic section. I just told you that, right? It's all here. There's lots of stuff here you can play with. Um, we And then keep in mind, too, that we can spend an entire semester talking about a single mechanism associated with diabetes. So please just to choose one mechanism mechanism and make sure you research it. So let me jump down here. When you present this section, you must also provide me with no less than five citations that show me where you got your information from. And when you present those citations, please make sure it's APA or American Medical Association citations. So uh, do some digging, do some research, find out what mechanism you want to see what the research says to tell that story and make sure that the citations match what you do here. And again, I've spent 10 years studying diabetes. I've read almost every paper out there, so I will know. So please tread lightly and do your work on this section. So just really quickly again, um, when you are doing the pathology section, I do expect you to do a little bit of research and have a minimum of five citations again so that I can follow your rationale. Now, um, I told you she is on some medication. So another team member, team member three, is going to do a five minute video, just like team member one did a video, uh, team member two did a video. Team member three does a video. Now, really quick, um, you don't have to segregate these portions by team. You can, you, you know, you can do this any way you want. I'm just doing this as a reference for you. So, if one person wants to present, uh, you know, pathology and introduction, by all means, do so. You have total control of this. I'm just giving you an outline. Um, so, I, as I have indicated. Um, a couple of medications that Susan is using is going to help control the conditions that she is living with. I know I told you that we are not going to focus on medications in this class. However, we are going to highlight some medications. Now, just really quickly, if you scroll down here, I put here, um, right here, medications and exercise considerations. So um, I told you what metformin does and what statin does to exercise. So you guys can use this however you want. Uh, just it must be used. So you can either uh, look at your textbook. So for example, uh, if we look at, let me find that section really quick. If we look at this, um, what I had given you in this section, right? So if we look at this thing that I uploaded here, there's a little bit of uh, medication management here. Uh, it's not very big, right? But it does talk a little bit about the medications. Um, you can also use outside sources. Um, so whoever is taking this section is going to talk about the medications a little bit. Uh, you do so as you think best. Um, again, this is your own design. You and your team members should put your heads together and find uh, a creative story. Find and create a story that supports Susan's storyline. Chapter one talks about these medications. I will also give you uh, some individual information on these medications and here you go. Okay. Um, so just tell me a little bit about the medications and this could be, I'll even give you a break on this. I'll say three to five minutes uh, in duration on this section here. Now here's the meat and potatoes. Uh, this is very similar to you guys that are in 456A. We're going to use a similar graph or a similar Excel sheet. Um, but this is where I want you to, uh, there's a typo that should be four, not two. Um, this is where I want you to tell me how you would put this person through exercise. And I was going to make you tell me about assessments, but, um, you know, I want you guys to do a little more prescription. So I focused on the prescription component. So in this section, you will tell me every little and necessary detail concerning the program design. If you are clueless to what this program design looks like, do not fret. This is why I have given you this. So you can start putting this information together. Here's our trusty little chapter 21 again. And if you need help with the program design, here you go. Diabetes exercise programming. Now the things to consider. 
Are you going to do aerobic? Are you going to do strength? Are you going to do a combination of the two? Are you going to do any anaerobic training? Again, think of her goals. What are her goals? She wants to do a 5K walk, okay? She's not in wonderful shape. So when you are looking at this, high intensity interval training probably doesn't make a lot of sense, okay? Flexibility makes a lot of sense. Neuromuscular makes a lot of sense. Functional for uh, daily activities or, or active daily living activities makes a lot of sense. So here is what you need to think about. Where are you going to have Susan if you do this aerobic? If you do some strength training, where are you going to have Susan? Um, I hope none of you want to do any high intensity interval training with her. It makes no sense. So to help you with this section, I have created uh, this for you. Uh, give me one second. Make sure this is the right one. Yes, this is the right one. Um, I just have documents open everywhere because I'm teaching multiple classes and uh, I just got to make sure everything is right. Okay, so um, if you have, if you were in 456A, you don't really need to focus on this part because we already talked about it, but um, I changed some of the suggestions over here. Okay, so this is a spreadsheet that I use when I work with my clients, um, and it's just a way for me to map out and organize my thoughts and how I'm going to progress the exercise and uh, how I'm going to just kind of keep track of everything. Um, and you should, as an exercise physiologist and a trainer, you should adopt something very similar to this. So let me just, oops, let me just add some things here. Um, I'm just adding these because um, I just want to make sure that you guys consider everything. Cancel, cancel. Um, okay, that's not right. Pardon me for one second. I'm just doing this in real time. And delete. Of course, you're not going to delete. Clear all. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Just bear with me. Okay, there we go. That's what I wanted. Um, so, you guys can use this in any way you see fit. So, um, if you want to modify it, modify it. If you want to keep it the way it is, keep it the way it is. If you want to... Um, use a different version of this that makes more sense to you, by all means do so. I am just trying to facilitate uh, this for you to help you with the organization process, okay? So, um, if we are talking about our client, what is her name? Who are you? Fill it in. And then fill in this information here. Now, we are not going to estimate VO2 here, um, and I have calculations in here that will spit out a BMI, um, but I've kind of given you some fictitious information. So if I go back to this, um, her BMI on my Excel document is probably not going to be accurate with this. So um, if you want to go in and manually just put that BMI there, uh, see I have this ready to calculate. Um, it's, it's not going to be accurate. So, uh, just keep that in mind. And that's why I highlighted it in red. Um, so you can put in all of her information here, body fat, uh, target body fat. That would be your BMI there. Um, that's a typo. Let me get rid of that. Let me get rid of that. Um, and then I have some concerns and suggestions for you. So these are things that I want you to keep in mind while you are doing this, uh, project. So uh, the first thing I said is, uh, did you consider hyperlipidemia? Did you, did you keep that in mind throughout the course of this? Because that's a major, that's a major component of this. And if not, I said, please review the lecture. Um, okay. Uh, did you consider the diabetes component? See the PDF, right? I made that PDF for you and I would advise you to uh, read this PDF uh, several times because it's it's very short and it has a lot of information in here that can help you tell the right story. Um, uh, please pay close attention to the recommendations for exercise intensity. If you don't know where to find that, ladies and gentlemen, well, it's right here. Here are your intensities, right? So um, 
please conduct the medical history and at risk evaluation, right? And uh, that's kind of what I gave you here, right? So please make sure you conduct that. And please make sure you're considering what you found when you are about to prescribe exercise. Um, what mechanisms are you going to focus on with the diabetes presentation? Are you going to focus on insulin resistance, glucose intolerance, lipotoxicity? Um, what are the client's goals, right? So, uh, well, the client kind of told us that uh, she wants to walk this 5K and she wants to reduce her BMI, right? So that's going to mean that we're probably going to do a lot of cardiovascular uh, fitness. Um, how will you get them there? Okay, so what do I mean by that is this information here. So you guys are going to have to do a little bit of research. And if you look at my document, let's go back to that section. I told you that when you are doing your fitness prescription, you're going to need five citations as well. So you're going to have to go to the literature. And there's a lot of literature out there that talks about diabetes and exercise. And particularly, where did my Excel sheet go? Uh, combinations of strength and cardio. So you need to figure that out. So um, I let, you know, exercise. You can have them say that you are going to have them do static stretches, right? You can fill this out however you want, right? I can get rid of this. You can say they're going to do static stretches. How many times are you going to do it? Right, is there going to be weight involved? You might say, sure, we'll have them do with a five pound plate. And then I have this progression section here. And what this progression section means is what are you going to do to progress them to week two? All right. And with the warm ups, there might not be any sort of progression. Frequency. How frequently are they going to warm up? Well, hopefully you say every time they do a exercise, they're going to warm up. What is the mode of the warm up? Are you going to have them on an elliptical? Are you going to have them on a row machine? Are you going to have them on maybe uh, a row machine and an elliptical machine? Uh, what is the intensity of that going to be? So when we talk about intensity, are you going to talk about a percentage of heart rate? Are you going to talk about uh, a percentage of VO2? Are you going to talk about a, a heart rate reserve? And you should know what these things are because they were all presented to you in Kinesiology 456A. Are you going to talk about maybe VO2 uh, reserve? That's for you and your team to figure out. Um, so whichever one you want to do. So you could talk about percentage of maximum heart rate. You could talk about percentage of VO2. You could talk about heart rate reserve, a percentage of heart rate reserve. So I'm giving you these things and you, you just might have to do a little bit of digging, right? And that's why uh, we have this project because, and you might even want to do a percentage of uh, VO2 reserve. So, um, and if you do that, you're going to have to make up a VO2 score uh, and if you want to do that, I can even, I can even give you one here. We can say that her, see, this is why I'm talking to you guys. Cause I can add this in real time. We can say that her, let's do it right here. VO2 score was, let's do 18. Um, she did it. Let's say she did, let's say her VO2 was an 18. Okay. Um, so that would mean that, um, let's say milliliters per kilogram of body weight per minute. So that way it's there. Oh, that should be an M. Okay. There's her VO2 score and I'll make that bold for you. Okay. So if you wanted to do something with, VO2 percentage or VO2 reserve percentage. I'm telling you right now, if you chose to do that, it's a bit more difficult. You have to do a bit more difficult deep diving on that. I will give you more points. So just, just letting you know. So you choose what sort of intensity you want to do. And, uh, again, um, it's in our, it's in the diabetes PDF that I gave you. Um, and it's in the textbook. So you guys can choose something from the textbook that measures intensity. Uh, I'm just giving you ideas. Uh, are they going to do strength training? If so, what are their sets and reps? What are the weights? Um, what is the progression going to be from week one to week two? Cause here's week two. 
Uh, what is the frequency? Well, if they're trying to lose weight, you might say that the uh, weightlifting is going to be two times a week. Um, and you might say they're going to do leg press. Okay, they're going to do uh, squats. Right? So you put that in there so I could see you prescribing, right? What is the weight? What makes sense for this woman? What makes sense for progression? What makes sense for frequency? You fill this in however you see fit, okay? Uh, and same thing with cardio. Are, is she going to do, what's the mode? Is she going to do a treadmill? Is she going to be running outside? Is it going to be treadmill and outside? Is it going to be a row machine? Uh, and then how are you going to do a cool down? <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, and then you're going to do the same thing for week two. Make sure that week two progresses from week one. That's why we have this progression piece. Make sure week three progresses through uh, week two. And make sure week four progresses from week three. Okay, so use this how you see fit. But keep in mind that your team has to submit one of these. And I will give you the folder uh, to where you're going to submit that, okay? So let's move on to the next section and we'll talk about how to conclude this presentation. All right, so uh, again, here is the fitness prescription. So who's going to do it and make a video? And again, that video is entirely up to you how you want to present it. I have given you, um, I have given you resources to help you with this, especially here. Keep in mind that we're doing four weeks. We're not doing four to six months. Um, so just use this information here, right? The frequency, intensity, it's all here. It's all available for you. And it tells you the goals, right? So let's, let's look at the next section. What do we think is going to happen? What are the effects of exercise here? Will there be an improvement of insulin sensitivity? Will, will there be an improvement in blood lipids? Will there be an improvement in cardiovascular fitness? Um, well, if we look at our handy dandy little sheet here, uh, look at this. What are the effects of exercise training? It's right there for you. Um, so you're going to say that after we put our subject through this, uh, cute little Excel sheet that Mr. B made for us. I'm just looking for it. I got so many documents open right now. Um, what is going to be the end result? So pre present to me and then we'll make this, uh, I forgot to put this there. Uh, let's put that like that team member five. Let's just say that this is three minutes. Um, tell me what, what happens? Tell me what is going to occur in their body. What are the physiological changes be? Will there be a change in glucose tolerance? That should probably be over here. See, I'm glad I'm doing this because it helps me. Oh, geez. Helps me make sure everything's in order. This is, it's been really difficult writing this on the plane uh, while flying back from Chicago. So will there, let's just say glucose tolerance. You guys, you guys know what I mean. There we go. Let's change that so it looks pretty. Looks pretty. There you go. Uh, there's too much space there. Let's make that a capital. Okay, so uh, tell me about that. And then again, here's some considerations for the medication. Um, and you can use this here with the medication section, uh, right here. Okay. So there's several sections. I've given you a whole bunch of, whole bunch of resources to tell this story. And then, uh, I just have this last section here that says that the training wheels are off. Please make sure that you guys, uh, do this on your own. I, I am not, I cannot create this story for you. You have to create. This is entirely your design. You guys have 1000% freedom creation, creativity, and how this project uh, goes. So that is your exam three, and this will get you ready for exam four, which will be very similar to this because now we are applying um, our knowledge. I've been giving you guys scenarios. I've been giving you guys lectures on the disease, but now we have to apply it so that we know how to apply it in the real world, whether that is going to be at a gym or at a hospital or at a clinic. Um, we need to know how to do it. So I'm going to upload all of this. I will give you guys a notice on the announcements that it is, it is ready. And this is due again, November 19th. I'm going to leave you alone the rest of the week and get going on this. Take care guys.